Good morning, folks. We've got a number of interesting stories to hit today, and it's pretty much all about space. We're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the same bright active regions in ionized iron as we saw in the red ionized helium from the opening, but we also see the coronal hole on the south. Top left, you can really also see that northern coronal hole coming in ahead of the active region. There, the sunspots did indeed produce a small C-class flare yesterday, minor, but we'll monitor those spots as they turn in today. Up next is the solar wind. Stream descends in intensity as the coronal hole influence wanes. We're all quiet this morning. And so we're off to Apophis. While many of you know it has a close approach in 2029, you may not know that right now a mission is unfolding to study the asteroid in as high detail as possible for an attempt to deflect the asteroid from any potential impact eight years from now only three more days to gather that information at Green Bank. Of note for Vega Watchers, one of the prettiest stars in the night sky, they now think there's a scorching planet locked in super tight orbit. After reviewing the data, in reality it might just be a weird light fluctuation at the star they can't yet explain. Up next, we remember yesterday the story about the most distant cosmic jet ever seen in radio waves. Today, Chandra steps in, with the most distant X-ray jet, about 12.7 billion light years away. It is amazing to watch the change in these articles' discourse, from the model-breaking impossibility of these massive objects existing so early, to their asking if these new studies can elucidate how they're managing to form so quickly. Still, never willing to guess, they actually had more time. And of course, if I'm going to expound details like that, I better have a story related to it coming up next. Newest, most precise measurements of the universe expansion, allegedly, did little other than utterly confirm without a shadow of a doubt there is a major discrepancy in this part of astronomy. Lastly, on the article front, something we've seen at the galactic scale and now scaled down. Just as we've seen them realize that galaxies are not islands in space and the inflows follow magnetic fields, it's the same here. The field effect is not limited to one part of the connected system. The planets are no different in their stellar environments. We are connected much more vastly than we're primed to believe. It is these larger scales of connection which explain why the sun has so many correlations with seismicity and weather. It's directly connected to it, and the distance between us is negligible when discussing effects of magnetic field waves. Folks, this video from Friday night eliminates your need to find the right words, explain why you are into these topics, or break down the data or sets of facts. You can just leave a breadcrumb, crack open the door. My goal was to make that easy for you, for you to have a one-link share for detractors and skeptics. It's a tool. Use it. Folks, we have some slightly damaged copies of the books available at the site, both the textbook and the new book. And website members at suspiciousobservers.org, your deeper look from yesterday is a monster, especially with the solar micronova mechanism on many of our minds. Simple and understandable. Our books and observers gear is found at otf.cells.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.